good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Miami Township Trustees June 5th to order at 5 o'clock sharp. Um, first, I'd like to welcome everyone. And um, I'm sure you signed in. There was a sign-up sheet somewhere. Um, I would like to entertain a motion for the adoption of the minutes of May 15th. So moved. I'll second that. Any other discussion? I have a couple small questions or clarifications. Um, page something under standing committee reports, second bullet point, but I guess it doesn't actually have one. It reads, the fiscal officer will move the cemetery deeds from her records to the others stored in the Quonset Hut storage room. Uh, that's not correct. The deeds will come here and be stored in the in the in the file. That was our, corrected. Oh, all right. Then I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't guess. I, I think you might have a draft. All right, that's the draft. Well, okay. Yeah. If that's there's one other minor correction, but I think I'm sure you got it because you sent it back to us. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, uh, vote. What about oh. you? You also noted the mill. She must have corrected it. I corrected both of those, <laughs> yes. Um, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, did you change the spelling of Riley Dixon? I did. Okay. Right. Um, I missed the corrected minutes. But okay. we'll, we'll, we can well, talk about that we later. We need to work on the process there. Yeah. Okay. Um, may we vote if there's some further discussion? I've moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of May 15th, or I'm sorry, yes, May 15th, 2023, as um, corrected earlier. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Minutes are approved. Um, and I think, Chris, what she would like to do, uh, entertain a motion to amend the, the minutes of March 6th to reflect that we unanimously approved a $1 an hour raise for Brandon. Mm -hmm. His last name? Morris. Brandon Morris, um, effective March 1st. I move the beginning of that pay period. Beginning of that pay period. I move that amendment. I second. I may. Any further discussion about that dollar? No, I. May we vote, please? It's been moved and seconded to amend the minutes of March 6, 2023, to reflect a $1 pay increase for Brandon and Friday's life. Morris. Morris. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Mr. Mo Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. So moved. So, so amended. All right. On to the payment of our bills. I would entertain a motion to approve the payment of the bills in the amount of $86,625.46. Margaret's note was that it's higher than usual because two pay periods landed in that five um, Three week. week, that five Friday uh, month. So it's higher than it usually is. General fund, $10,618.66. Fire fund. $61,384.14, EMS billing, $1,806.92, cemetery, $5,627.02, roads, $7,188.72, um, any, any discussion? No. Don? Nope. Hearing no discussion, may we vote? Why is there a motion? I so move. <laughs> I second. We move and second to approve payment of bills in the amount of eight six thousand six twenty five forty six as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. Um, we have correspondence. Uh, the people at home can read through this. Ms. Abel asked us to support a DOE Community Solar Grant. 
Um, see, Steve Weary request for written public testimony. The request for ZC minutes of April 2023. Colin Altman gathering the data for the fire EMS assignment. Mark Heiss, thank you for the invitation to Green County Legislature breakfast. Um, Lee Sloan, Don's going to talk about that later. Um, new development on entering no new development about the Kingwood. Um, that yeah, yeah, training opportunities. Um, yeah, that's this thing right here. This OPA inspected status of our surface water permit. Is that something you'll take care of, or do you want me to look into that? They, um, I believe I did. Okay. Uh, if not, I will. But okay. I, I read it over, and it, it's just a very perfunctory end of time of construction, and right. everything is good, and it's been reviewed. And, and so we have to submit a notice to terminate mm -hmm. that thing. And, yeah. Yeah, permit and we will. Tell them to quit coming around every six months or whatever they've been doing. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure one of us got that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, public addition to the agenda. Anyone? Want to add anything to the agenda? Um, okay. Cool. All right. Fire department report. What's the update on the fire EMS? So fairly busy last kind of period, 35 EMS calls, 14 uh, different fire calls, and we did have a significant two-car crash that resulted in uh, care flight being called and multiple patients transported to uh, two trauma centers, sawing in the valley, and uh, one uh, to GMH, um, and also resulted in mutual aid being called from Cedarville and Houston. So it's pretty, you know, unfortunately it's typical Grinnell and Clifton Roads usually are nine times out of 10 pretty bad crashes, um, primarily because of the one hill. Uh, let's see, street fair, uh, typical plans really for us for street fair, um, you know, in terms of duty and that, um, no significant changes in how we're, we'll be managing street fair from, from the previous, uh, previous last one. That's redundant. Don't put that in that slide. <laughs> um, the organizational assessment that the board contracted with the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association to uh, uh, do our assessment of the Township Fire Department, uh, that data has all been uh, provided, and uh, so we should be getting a time frame of when that'll, we'll start getting information from that. Uh, let's do, uh, D the dispatch contract, which you have, Marilyn, in your packet needs to be signed, and it does show the rate hikes um, that we are receiving. Um, so $11,506.15 is what we'll be charged next year. It's basically going up $5,000 each year up to 2026. See, we put in a report uh, utilization of the employee assistance program, and keep in mind that's for all township employees, um, and of course, including you guys, if you know if they want to use utilize EAP for for counseling and that. Uh, and then, lastly, is the big thing: um, new medic purchase to replace the rapidly dying medicated one. Um, the price that was quoted is. Three hundred thirty-six thousand dollars and thirty-seven cents, mm -hmm. which is yeah. quite substantial. Did I read it wrong? Yes, oh. it's quite substantial. Um, our last, you know, that's that's a off the top of my head about one hundred and twenty grand more. Uh, that's just the price. Unfortunately, doing business, and that's the reality of still suffering from COVID uh, and supply chain issues. Uh, so that price is good for 30 days, and we, un until the contract, the build contract is signed, we do not get put on the build list. Um, I do not know a time frame. Typically, medic purchases are about 90 to 120 days from build time to delivery. Uh, this is probably going to be well over a year. 
So unfortunately, that puts us in a, a pretty desperate position uh, in terms of getting that, being able to get that vehicle in service. Because even once, once we take delivery, it'll still take another month for it to even go in service. And unfortunately, Medicaid One is really truly limping on. It's now considered reserve apparatus, so it only is going out if we absolutely have to take it out. Um, so. um, we're not even on the purchase list yet for the chassis at this point. No, this is actually switching because I have no way of knowing when to get the chassis ordered. Mm -hmm. um, it, it basically forces us to have to run the purchase of the chassis through them. So yeah, that, it hasn't that is... Been, this, it hasn't been done yet. So we're still, I mean, part of the lead time is built in with the chassis, which we're not sure oh, correct. what that is. Yes, correct. And then the other part is the, the build, so yes. Yes, yeah. correct. So the chassis is included in the 336? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now we have previously authorized the purchase of the of the chassis, so that's again that's in this price. Uh, the three the remainder of the funds will be generated or will be paid through various townships accounts, uh, including uh, the remainder of the money from the sale of the firehouse that we have uh, available to us, which was earmarked for the bulk of the purchase of this, but due to some issues about half of that money got locked up in a, a different account and uh, but by the time this is ready to take delivery th there will be uh, additional accumulation of funds through the general fund and through the fire fund it's through the different fire funds themselves so uh, it's it's not like we've got this money lying around but we will be able to uh, write the check when the, when the invoice comes and when do we have to write them? Is it a lump sum or do we have to prepay part of it or? No, it's a, it's a lump sum yeah, at time of delivery. Mm -hmm. So when I go to Van Wert to pick it up, I hand them a check. <clears throat> Just curious, <clears throat> wasn't your business doing this kind of thing? Very long time ago. <laughs> I was just thinking the last time I bought a new ambulance, it was $47,000. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to make a motion that we uh, authorize our assistant chief to enter into agreement uh, with uh, PenCare, I'm sorry, I forgot, uh, for the uh, build of a new F550 Braun ambulance. I second that motion. For 336, 37. Okay. You can have that for your records. Thank you. I'm curious about the funds it's coming out of, but clearly we're going to do it either way. Have we, have we decided, or we have some in the general fund that was earmarked for it? Mm -hmm. We are still tussling over the ARPA. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, given the fact that we're probably 18 months out, 12 to 18 months at a minimum out, uh, there will be other funds available yeah. into the fire fund. Once, once I sign the purchase agreement also, um, I'll get a pretty much a, a fairly solid delivery date. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they just can't get into it. <laughs> pretty much fairly so. solid. Yeah, pretty much. That's how it works in building these. I would say it, typically my past experience with Braun is it's been accurate to within about two weeks, which is pretty decent. Pre-COVID? Okay. Yeah, yeah, true. Pre-inflation. Um, okay. You have nothing else? It's been moved and seconded to authorize... Um, Assistant Chief Powell to enter into a contract with Penn Public Safety Technology for an F 554 by 4 Braun Chief XL medic unit in the amount of 336037. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Motion? That's a new high for me. 
336,000. That's, that's, that's more than the mean median price of a house in Yellowstone. Wow, that's, I hadn't thought about that uh, one. Highest. Mm -hmm. Well, the last one was 100, Medic 82 was a 168,000. That's not, I think that's about right. I know it's closer to two, but that's splitting hairs. We don't want to split hairs. No. All right, Mr. Dan, Cemetery Road Report. Okay. Cemetery report. Since the last meeting, we've had two burials. Both were ashes this past Saturday. One was in a tree space in the Cook Road. So we have ashes and another person back there. And then we have one this Friday coming up. So. And um, which cemetery? Glen Forest. Glen. At which part of Glen Ford? Oak Grove. Okay. So two, one, two in, two one in, in Oak Grove. Grove, one in the traditional. traditional. Okay. Cool. And the next one will be in the old park. That's right. I'm going to work on that water line cleanup tomorrow. I'll try to straighten that up a little bit. So, so what happened with that water line? We um, we started over because it had a leak. Lots of leaks. It had lots of leaks, and that was the original water line or the new one? That was the original. Okay, and it's on village land, and they had to, and we have to pay for it. Well, no, it's township land now. It was when yeah. that was put in village. All right. Did you want to? Oh, did you have more to say about the cemetery? And you had something to say about water lines and signage. Um, we know about the water lines, and I've ordered uh, signs that are similar, or I should say, the same to the section markers that we have down there and we'll put that it says it will say water and so we will put them at the, the water at, at the water source at the faucets uh, both in the Glen Forest uh, section the new one and then also in the uh, Glen Forest East the new cemetery section where there are two I mean if you count the one that's right at the right at the entrance to the natural burial that would be two there um, so then four, one of four signs to uh, alert the public of where water is available. That's awesome. It's great to have water in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. I'd like to mention, I was in the cemetery, oh, well, particularly for this purpose, so let's say on, on Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, and it appears that peonies have been a very popular plant, at least at one time, to plant around graves. Mm -hmm. And they were all in full bloom over the road that we can They were beautiful. Yeah. And I almost thought maybe we should make some effort to, as cemetery owners to plant more. But of course, there isn't places to plant that aren't, that aren't you know, somebody's grave. But I just, I was impressed with that. Uh, the cemetery looked good in general, but that was just an extra. Uh, Oh, it just it just made it very close. Well, they're they're not new. They come out and they. Oh no, no, the okay. peonies. Have, yeah, been there forever. Yeah, right. But that, well, that's the nice thing about peonies. Yeah. Once you get the plant, yeah. you don't have to do anything. Yeah. But um, but I was thinking, you know, I I mean the odd fellows are you know involved with the with the cemetery and but I'm thinking maybe we should plant some peonies. But we can't just go and plant peonies. There isn't there isn't sort of public space to to do gardening. So. That's, it's just the way it is, and it's nice that people did that in the past. I, I, on that note, I'd like to apologize for disturbing your Memorial Day weekend, Don, um, calling about the, the, the water leaks. I thought it was something that was relatively new. It all worked out fine. Glad you got that taken care of. All right. Are we on roads yet? <laughs> Can be. <laughs> okay. okay. Same guys. We're going to do a little wedging pavement in, in Clifton on Thursday for Clifton. Do some wedging. Clifton Village. For the village of Clifton, mm -hmm. yes. And then other than that, we're working on the mowing the ditches and starting making another land. Trimming, mowing. Might just clarify that we have a contract with the village of Clifton. Uh, just a fixed per hour rate, is that mm, how I know? Plus material. Uh, plus materials. Um, and that's why we're doing it in Clifton. Okay. 
Chris, what? you want to talk about the auction of our truck and snowplow, which I couldn't find on the gov governmentdeals.com. Did you look again? I called him, but he didn't call me back. Mm -hmm. Pickens. Before we get to that, let's ask Don uh, how Clifton Cemetery looked for Memorial Day. Were you satisfied with its condition? I did not look. Let's see, did you get a call? No, I just was asking him. I mean, I thought I thought Glen Forest looked very nice. I thought Clifton looked very nice. So Clifton looked beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's always it's, that cemetery is beautiful. It's looking pretty good this year. Even if it's not beautiful, it's beautiful because <laughs> of what it is. But we fortunately were able to get our. Um, um, mowing crew on both cemeteries to uh, get them prepared well for Memorial Day as opposed to last year where it was mowed a week or more. The Glen Forest was mowed, not but then Glen Forest was mowed a week or more before Memorial Day and it was quite shaggy and there were a couple of comments about it. Um, that looks good this year. Mm -hmm. um, our next thing in the natural burial area is what are some of those trees that go alongside the, the garden center? Locust. Those are locust. locust. You see how they're creeping in? Yeah, I think they're the roots. There's a, they have a whole well, row of trees. Yeah, and they're, coming all they're creeping we, in. We just cut them off. And you did? We will. Oh, because we, we were going to plop them off and get some expert advice about painting the, painting the um, nice. things, try to retard them a little. It's a pretty substantial one growing in the corner by the fence on that side. Did you see in the it? back? No, in the front. It's probably big around there. Yeah, we got to get that. We'll cut it down. Um, and then I'm going to, Kim Iconis is going to give us just the right formula to paint on it with poisonous things. I'm not sure exactly the it's combination. It's called a deterrent to growth. A deterrent. <laughs> We're going to paint a deterrent to growth. It's not easy to stop black locusts from sprouting like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Any, anything else for cemeteries? Um, no, I guess we're back, we, we're halfway through roads. Right, we're roads. three quarters through roads. I guess. Cemeteries, roads. I'm sorry? I'm done. Oh, okay. Um, well, we do have something for roads. I do have something for roads, and I also have something for cemeteries that I forgot to mention. Um, just keep in mind, at some time when you have your trimmer out looking for things to trim, the exit lane at the back of the natural burial, you know, where it's mowed and oh, it goes down, over the shed. Down the side. Yeah, it's, it's getting, yeah, I'll, I'll run the whole getting a little tight there. Um, the other thing I had to say is, you know, I was just, I was out there yesterday and I think maybe this morning also, but if you two, Marilyn and Don, I'm not sure how much you had seen that back area where the oak grove is now prior you know to anything being done with it but it was a it was a mess i mean there was there were huge i mean like 10 feet mounds of 100 feet long uh, debris and uh, dirt and why were there mounds of debris it was because it was a village dumping ground oh. for many years they you know they where oak grove is now yeah they dig up a road or don't something. That, and don't put that in your advertisement for your cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Forward dump. It's all gone. <laughs> and as you know now, it, it's, it's very nice. Yeah. Uh, and it is just the way we Go hoped it would look. And it's all 100% uh, credit to Dan and Brandon. Uh, but um, they put an awful lot of work into getting that up cleared. And especially the what's going to be the exit um, lane or drive or whatever it is that doesn't actually exist yet, but on the south side of the cemetery, they took back a lot of the how many maybe ten feet at least worth thirty of, feet huh about thirty feet thirty feet holy oh. moly of tree branches of oh, like honeysuckle and things yeah and branches whatever lots of trees that just back. had fallen in. Mm -hmm. So now we'll be able to put a, a lane there, so people will be able to exit out after their, their after their funeral service. And originally we weren't going to have people go in there, but then we realized there's grandma can't walk 500. Yeah. And cats 
caskets or have, well, there's no, there will be no caskets in the Oak Grove? No. Well, there will be, there will be the same caskets as in the National Burial. There will be biodegradable oh. caskets, or other than there. under the oak trees. Those are the only ones where there will be no caskets allowed. No. Okay. So anyway, thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. And the board appreciates it. And we look forward to many years of oak tree plantings and <laughs> other sure plantings. Say. <laughs> other. Um, the oak, only other thing I had for, yeah, for the road is we, we had this conversation that we were not having luck in selling the uh, old dump truck uh, either by the advertisement in the Yellow Springs News, which did not elicit a, a, right. a sale. And now it's been, we think, on GovDeals.com um, for a good month of time. Good month. Yeah, and have not had a successful sale. And I was, and I looked through the Ohio Revised Code as best I could, and I didn't see an alternate method that if those things fail, what, what are you going to do, other than lower the price? Obviously, that's the, you know, that's the easy way. So I asked our attorney, and she agreed that no, you can't just give up the process and say, okay, now, Mark, you want a truck? <laughs> you know, what, what are you going to give me for that truck? And sell it to a private individual. She says you got to keep it. And you keep it, you know, uh, on the market. And if you got to lower the price, if that's how you're going to sell it, or or use it as a backup, or whatever you want to, but you can't just sell it to to somebody individually. And then she added, but if you're going to sell it on an internet site, I don't know why specifically an internet site, but that's neither here nor there. We have to advertise in the Yellow Springs News. She says specifically local newspaper. We have to advertise twice that it will be for sale on which will be gumdeals.com. So I've written an advertisement for such purpose. But if it's, how come I'm not seeing it on gumdeals.com? Was it ever really there? It must have, because we had a gentleman come and look at it, and that's where he found it. Or his wife found it, told him he came to look at it. So it was right. listed at one point. All right. It should still be listed. All right, I'll put it on the website then. If it's really there, I, I stopped short of doing that because I didn't have faith that it was really there. But okay, well, I must have left the... You said draft. you looked for it, you couldn't find it? I did not. Oh. But I, I called Jared to find out mm -hmm. what's going on, because I know it was on there at one point, because the gentleman told me they found it on there. Okay. Well, right. she said to be safe and to be, you know, in compliance. Run two ads for it. They don't have to be big at all, just to say that that's where, you know, you could find the vehicle. You don't have to go through the whole listing or any of that, but of what it is and what its attributes are. So we'll take care of that, and that's all I had for. I'll, I'll try Gary again. He can call me back. I'll yeah. try again. Anything more for Dan, the cemetery and roads person? Nope. All right, fiscal officer. Margaret is only here once a quarter now, and she'll be coming in about a month from now. But she gave us a resolution to amend resolution, resolution 223-28. I entertain a motion to, um, it's an amendment of permanent appropriation. Shall I read it first or ask for the motion? Okay. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorized the following appropriation, EMS billing, $2,000. Well, that was a short one today. <laughs> Anybody? Um, the Miami Township trustees authorized the fiscal uh, officers to do so immediately. I so move. A second. Uh, any further discussion? No. May we vote? Moving, uh, moved and seconded to um, adopt resolution 2023-28, amendment of permanent appropriation as enumerated. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Okay. With the zoning inspector, this, we, I didn't give you a copy. We have about three things we're going to take care of before we ask for your report. Okay. okay. 
Um, Don, update on the Kingwood appeal. Well, we've likely seen, uh, I believe it's been two emails from uh, our attorney, Lee Sloan. Um, the short of it is that the original power siding board um, denial of the Kingwood project uh, still stands. They have appealed uh, to the Supreme Court and Citizens for Green Acres has appealed uh, that that they're well, may, in the citizens appeal which we uh, went along with uh, we challenged that the power siding board only refused on the basis of uh, the unified public opposition uh, not on uh, issues of drainage or environmental impact uh, so in order to broaden the fight, so to speak, uh, citizens appealed uh, that those arguments. Uh, we're in a, a back and forth over <coughs> the, the power siding board uh, has gone past the 30 day, the original 30 day deadline, mm -hmm. and uh, Kingwood has gone to the Supreme Court saying, uh, the Ohio Supreme Court, that this should have, simply the fact that they didn't uh, make a decision within 30 days uh, dismisses the opposition. So we're in a, a dance around technicalities the main issues will still be uh, dealt with by the Supreme Court once they deal with uh, the the 30-day issue um, so it's just still bubbling and no no clear timeline okay <clears throat> But it, it's still, all the townships have uh, signed on in uh, union with the Citizens for Green Acres, and then separately the county commission has uh, been doing parallel appeals. So what I understood was their application didn't go through. They appealed to the OPSB, but the OPSB was slow. So they said, based on that, we're going straight to the Supreme Court. And then we got something, it looks like they might be pushing it back. Like, like we got from Lisa, we, will have, we, we have no objection to dismissal of our cross appeal if the appeal by Kingwood Solar is likewise dismissed. So somehow they might be moving it back into the Maybe we better not get into the weeds with that. They might be moving it back to the appeal of the o at the OPSB. And if the, they do that, we'll back off <coughs> and let the process happen. Okay. That's how I would take it. <laughs> the in overall, Lee Lee emphasizes Lee Sloan, our attorney, uh, emphasizes that uh, the basic refusal or dismissal. Uh, of the project by the power siding board s still stands uh, the, s the back and forth right now is over uh, the, the 30 day you know, process business and then it will eventually go to the Supreme Court without talking about the appeals and uh, or about the 30 day business and he just feels that the Kingwood is being they're, they're trying to 
uh, play all the cards that they, they can imagine they have. Uh, and Does he know about how long this, it'll take for, the, for an answer from the Supreme Court? No. Does he know it'll be is it longer than a year or two, or is this something that could happen quickly? I'm just asking that, because, that I have not asked. I'm just asking because we're thinking of a two-year moratorium, and I don't know if things will still be settling out. Okay, Don. I, not that you're the expert, and and you know, for me, I don't even. I have almost no idea how the Ohio Supreme Court operates. Is it similar to the National Supreme Court in so much as they pick and choose what cases they're going to hear? or do they have to hear every case that comes before them? Well, they can, they, you know, they can send it back. They can they, send it back. But, <laughs> I mean, have they already Actually, said they're not going to send it back? I cannot, comp since it's, it's not been in any court, does power signing board count as a court? Uh, oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. So the, the only place to appeal the power siding board is the to the Supreme court. court. There's no appellate court level in Ohio. I, okay, that makes it clearer to me. All right. I've been doing a lot of information gathering about utility solar and about a lot of the things that we'd say we want to look at, like soils and waterways and visiting other sites. I have. I went to visit Madison County. They have a, Madison County has a lot going on as far as solar. They have a facility that's almost completed called the Big Plains facility um, near London. So I have pictures, but I'm not sure I want to waste our time. If you want to see pictures, I can give you a verbal description of what I experienced. Um, it's about the same size as Kingwood, although Kingwood was reduced a little bit. And I'll tell you what I come to realize about soil and water. Um, the differences between the Kingwood area and the western side of the township. Um, and then we have a resolution. And I'd like to say up front, the resolution is to ask the county for a restriction zone on everything southeast of the Little Miami Scenic River for two years. And I recovered the email that we got from Huddleston, who said, go ahead, and he doesn't see any reason why we can't put a time limit out, just leave the, um, make sure it's well stated in the resolution. Um, so I went to Madison County. It's really off the beaten path, and it was a beautiful day. And I saw the mm, 1,300, 1,400 solar farm, and I wasn't horrified. Yeah. Acres? acres? Acres. What did I say? No. So you just left out the acres. Yeah. I wasn't horrified by it. I, 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 I don't want to offend anybody who um, is horrified by the, the prospect. Um, I can show you. Pictures, if you so want to. You're saying visually, you visually. Not. I, ha I have pictures. Also. Mm -hmm. Not really. Not really. So were there houses around? Were there houses? There were houses in our area. Your in, in the Kingwood area has, I think, more houses than this one had. But there, there were. So I saw these. I they didn't look as mechanical as I thought they were. They were black. They were sleek. Would you want um, them surrounding your home? Would I want them surrounding my home? <laughs> Well, my neighbor's about 10 feet from my house, so I... The house and a solar farm is Yeah, I, I understand that. So, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going to deliver the, the moratorium today, but I saw, what, what I'm getting at is, I saw a lot of fields <coughs> of bare soil, and I saw a lot of, you know, industrial agriculture, and I didn't think that the solar was hideous in comparison. It was actually, so I stopped and I, um, I saw some, I, talk, I talked to a few people. Gosh, I, I should probably surrender. Um, I, I, I met a couple from 
Columbus who had moved out to, um, they, they moved out to Madison County because they, were, they had decades of living in Columbus. They wanted a place of their own. And they, they bought a nice piece of property and then they were horrified to find out that there was a, there was a site, it was scheduled, there was a de development scheduled. And their, their words were, they didn't have the means to fight. It was before SB 52. They didn't know much about the intervener process either. And they said, you know, it, it's, we were, it's not as bad as we thought it was gonna be. They, they were worried, they were very worried about housing developments around them, having fled the city and not wanting to see houses. And they, if you look in their backyard, you could see their, their little barn, you know, their weekend farmers with their goats and their chickens. And behind it, you could see solar, massive fields of solar panels. And I asked about the process. They said, we'd much rather look at a solar field than a, 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 a housing development. Um, I asked about the process, uh, how the land was affected, what the process was like of construction, and um, they said it wasn't bad. I think what, what I did see was a five to ten acre staging site. It's the construction staging site where they have their building trailers and they have all their gravel and they have their, their supplies stacked high and the employee parking and big machines. And that was pretty hideous. I think a lot of the pictures where we see coming back where people say, oh my God, they're scraping out the topsoil, they're, they've ruined their, I think that was mainly the staging area. When I asked the people what it was like, the, the vast acreage behind their house that had um, pylons in the ground, they said, uh, or they had, it was all set up, they said there wasn't any tearing up of the land, it was a big, um, a machine about the size of a small bulldozer that went along and about four or five tap, 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 the next pylon, tap, 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 tap. And they did that all day long for quite a while. Tap taps are pretty loud though, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I have no idea. These people didn't seem to mind. Maybe they worked during the day. Anyway, theirs is put in <laughs> now. from Columbus. A lot of, a lot of it is almost all constructed. And then, like they said, they, they say, well, we know for, and across the street, they, they, they had the nice view of what's gonna be a cornfield, I assume, with a, some a little ways in the distance. They said, we know for 30 years, we're not gonna have housing development around here. So I found that interesting. I'm not trying to argue the other way. I'm just, yeah. I, I have a couple questions. Um, so it's not operational yet? It's not operational yet. So you didn't hear any noises that, that, right. the, that the turning of yeah. the, uh, and then, so and there are no weeds yet either. No, it was, uh, it, it, was, it was still pristine. I would say it was pristine. There are things growing under it, and I wonder, it wondered to myself how high are those going to get, and what, what, by what means are they going to control it? Yeah. And so I talked to the guy, um, the family who lives right next to the big staging area, and um, I thought, well, this guy's going to be ticked. I better let me go talk to them. And um, he said, well, we're getting, he wasn't too upset either. And I just, I just have to report this, you know, and it's an only a sample of two. He said, we know that when the construction is done, this whole area is going to be gone, this, this big construction. And meanwhile, I'm getting paid pretty well to live next to it. So. Oh, well, that's my next question. question. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're being compensated, we're not. They're being highly compensated. And, um, yeah. and yeah, he said, you know, right across the street about from here to, you know, at the back wall was a field where he had to look at um, solar panels. And he said, and that, they, they said when they're done, they're gonna plant a screen. And I'm hoping that turns out well. And he said, and you know what I won't have? He said, I've been in an argument for five years with the farmer that used to, that used to um, farm that field. And he didn't like, it's windy out here. And we were in an argument about not plowing or spraying chemicals when, when the wind's blowing. But they're gonna be spraying chemicals for the weeds. Are they? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they'll have to, they'll have to. We, we live there, we know what the weeds are. I mean, Do you remember when Antioch, for their small solar field, had the lambs. 
Oh, how could I forget? <laughs> it kept me up at night. I'm, oh. just, kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, oh. oh well. I mean, I, I was. That I was, was more just, very well, but there was quite a. But it worked that, better than not having a lens. Go buy it now. They have to. They have to go in yeah. low and spray. And that's a good point. These people are pretty naive now. They don't know what's going to look. Like. And I said there may be noise. Oh, there's no noise, but when it's operational, it's going to follow the sun. Yeah. And then I was thinking, the sun moves pretty slowly. Is it, are we talking about a constant noise? I mean, zzz, I mean, the sun only moves. No, it's, 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 it's all day. It's every, every movement. Every so, hour. Yeah, have you heard it? So it's every 15 minutes or something. Yeah. And from what I understand, too, when those are up and the wind's blowing, it's a wind. I mean, it's the wind was slow. Okay. So his point was, and he doesn't know yet, he may not know what he's in for yet, but his point was, I'm not going to be fighting with that farmer anymore. Yeah. Soil's not going to be drifting over onto my property. Herbicide is not going to be, I'm not going to bring my kids in every time he sprays or puts down um, fertilizer. So next week, I'm going to go down to. Um, What's that one outside Cincinnati? It's called the Hillcrest. Yeah. That's been in operation for a year. And see what it's like. Hopefully bother some people who are on the porch. <laughs> I know it takes a lot of privilege to walk up. It's good to look like an old lady sometimes. No one <laughs> suspects anything. I took a few slide pictures. Um, it was awkward. I didn't want to be thought a spy or an eco-terrorist. Hmm. Um, we'll leave the old lady at home then. <laughs> I have a question. Did, did anybody you talked to you mention how long the process it took? No, I think it's been going on about a year. Thank you. So they had high hopes that once the process was over, it was going to be okay. Like I said, it's a sample size of two. So um, meanwhile, and I'll go visit that other one. Meanwhile, I. I sent people a copy. We got finally got transmission lines where the, the transmission lines are in, in, in our township. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, the pictures are worth a thousand words. Um, and I have those too. Well, essentially, uh, what I recall is that the other major uh, power line, transmission line uh, in the township is parallel to, is it Snip Road? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, it's a north-south line in the west end of the township, as opposed to the pair that run sort of northeast, southwest, in, did I get that right? In the area where Kingswood is proposed. So, yeah, there's our township, and I, I blew, up, blew up our township, so there's my, our, our, our township is in blue. Um, we have, this, these are the major lines. This is 138 kilovolts and this is 365. I'm surprised how this major line, which goes through most of Kingwood, was only 138. Um, but what surprised me was this line, which is wooden posts. It's, you know, bigger than most wooden posts, but it looks like it'd be on Green Acres or something. But apparently that's, they just have that, um, Kingwood had posted that as less than 100 kilovolts. And, I, and I, I, so I looked it up. Utility solar requires, requires a transmission line of at least 69 kilovolts. So that finally answers the question of why everybody on the western part of the township is, is getting visits from reps from the companies. <laughs> and um, I, I, before that, I thought they would have to tie into this gigantic, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, with the gigantic, transmission line that goes right in Bath Township. So then I did the, the distances from all and put it, it puts the entire western side of the township within 1.25 miles of a transmission line. And it might, because it's less than 100 kilovolts, it might be limited somewhat by how much load it can carry, but I don't know that. So then I looked at the soils um, up here by Kingwood compared to this side of the township. And I talked to the Soil Conservation Service and 
and they sent me nice, all the prime soils of Ohio, and I looked at all the little maps, and basically what's going on here is all of our soils are prime soils, but there's two categories. One is it's prime and it's ready to go. Everybody wants it, whether you want to build or farm or build a solar, everybody loves it. And the other ones, the other side of the township is prime soils, but half of them are prime soils and half of them are prime soil if drained. And that makes sense because when you drive out there, there's lots of wetlands and um, Jacoby Branch goes all the way through there. Um, so then I started thinking, well, if it's not prime soil, it's vulnerable waterways. But, and then I thought to Don, well, maybe we should put, but, but I, I got a, maybe we should put more term on the whole thing, but then I started, then I came across this and I see that this was in the Yellow Springs News. This is the Tecumseh Land Trust's plans. There's John Bryan in black. The gray areas are all preserved land that already has easements on it. This is the area we're talking about. And, and the article says... When you say gray areas, you mean the darker gray? The dark gray, dark gray have easements. And the light gray is what they have their sights on. That's what they... Well, that's that what was they, the Jacoby Greenbelt area. Right. And I suppose they didn't... And, and rem may I remind you, this is where the wire... This is where the transmission line is. No, no. Mm -hmm. Further west. Oh. Yeah, so that, that's that's, that's, that's right. Houston Road. That's, that's Houston. Yeah, that's Houston. Oh, it's, it's off the map. map. Okay, it's off the map. Mm -hmm. That's Houston? That's SNP. That's SNP. Because this is that this is that farm on SNP. No, Road. Houston is, is, is below. It goes between yes. High and Nate Yellow Springs. Yeah, this is Nate Yellow Springs. This is SNP. Yeah. I was like, how could I miss that? Um, this is SNP. So. I don't know that. I, no, that the I land hope, there is not protected. Yeah, and they don't they they don't have their sights on it, but I guess they get they have to put boundaries on their, their mission. So I followed the river all the way up, and I started looking where it goes and where it crosses and who's using it. And I'm saying, are we really protecting? The, here, here's where it's approaching agraria. You know, they did the big. Great meander, new meander for two million dollars, and I think that's going to be a wonderful thing for creating biodiversity. But going further north, here it goes, and I'm thinking, you know, conservation easements. This one has a conservation easement right here. Are, are I'm not blaming the farmers, but are we really preserving? I mean, is solar any worse than that? As far as Protecting waterways. This is the place where we were, Agraria got that grant to do a protection plan and they, they had to forfeit it. The grant was not transferable. So people, you know, once you get a protection plan made, you're eligible for more grants too. And Ben Silliman is part of that and he, he even suggested that we, part of Jacoby is buried by farming pretty much. and had fantasies of having a grant that would unearth Jacoby again. So I started thinking, blah, 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 you know. I, I started wondering how bad is solar? So that's, I'm just collecting more information. I'll collect more, I'll get it all together. And all the things that we said that we were looking into, I think we could take off pretty easily. Um, so at this point, oh, one more thing. The Madison, the township trustee in, in Madison County said that this, he, he wasn't going to say it, but he said the schools are getting $2 million a year. Mm -hmm. I think he's wrong. I think the whole place is getting, the whole is getting $2 million and the schools are getting 65% of that, which is about $1.3 million a year, but it's $1.3 million a year. Um, just another factor in what we have to decide, and I'm almost done. Um, as opposed to property taxes, as opposed to, I mean, I mean yeah. property, property taxes. taxes and, you know, well, we, we had a Zoom meeting with, uh, with, that, with Vesper, with Kingwood, and uh, one of the questions I asked, we had to type them in, um, one of the questions I asked is, was that, what's the difference in revenue between um, the uh, pilot program and, and um, property taxes? And they did say that property taxes did bring in more revenue. 
not by a lot. I think yeah. it's thirty thousand dollars or something. They said, but so you'd have to consider the schools are still going to get their money through property taxes. <coughs> but the property taxes are very low if there's no, if there's well, if, if, the they're, if they're just goes farms. away, the property taxes go up. The, when the what goes away? The, the CAUV. CAUV. Yeah. The prop, yeah. When, when it's no longer used, for, farmers don't pay very high tax. They well, get they pay lower taxes. They pay lower taxes. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's all relative. It's all relative. They're still benefiting from. Oh, and, I'm, and I talked well, to Commissioner okay. Gould today, and he said, oh, it's way more once you get the solar. He's not in favor of it, but he said it'd be a much higher revenue. Um, what, what is it? So property taxes or the pilot? The pilot? Oh, the pilot, they, they, they probably break even because the, the pilot program is payment in lieu of taxes. In order to encourage development of electricity, they made this pilot program and you could pay $7,000 a year per megawatt instead of taxes, of okay. which the school gets 65%. Did they say that you're going to get a million taxes. and a half more dollars? Or a million and a half dollars. Well, everything I read said in the end you're going to come out the same because so the, 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 the EPA. But what I'm saying is, it's much more than if you left it farmland. No, that's what I'm asking. Are they saying? Oh yeah. That it's a million and a half more dollars than than what they're going to bring in anyway, or did they say they're going to bring in a million and a half dollars, and they left out the more because it's not that much more. And I'm, I it don't know. Be, I'm asking be, that question because we're getting to you're, work. You're, you're absolutely right. I, would I, believe, the I believe it's a lot lower. Well, we can believe that, but I would like to clarify that. Based on the commissioner's okay. statement, like, oh, yeah, it's a lot more. Okay, well, I, right. and, that's, and that's, that's all I, I got. Yes, and I'm just asking for clarification. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying I know, but I know we're getting to play throughout yeah, all this totally. stuff. And, and just to make you think you're going to get this, where well, maybe, maybe not. That may not be an advantage. So the EPA put this um, hypothetical 300 megawatt in somewhere rural Ohio. And they said if you've got the traditional route, once they, it gets in operation, they have to pay a, a whole bunch of money. You're probably familiar with depreciation. Right up front, um, if they went the traditional tax route, people get a lot of money up front and it depreciates over the life until it gets lower. Whereas the pilot program, they set an even amount that you could count on for the life of the project. All kinds of caveats like if the, if the, if the, if the solar farm go, is not in operation and not producing electricity, they don't pay anything. And um, if they close early, they don't pay any more. It goes back to CAUV land, so that's a that's a big that's kind of a big hornet's nest as far which is yeah. better. But it's it's definitely revenue for schools, and I think it's definitely significant revenue. Well, so it's revenue for everyone that receives property taxes. It's, it's not just schools. Yeah. And yeah, um, Cedarville commissioners, who was uh, you know township trustee, was. Um, said we wouldn't have to pass another levy for a really long time if we let it go through, but we still don't want to let it go through, is what he said. Uh, that, 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 that Cedarville Township would have done very well under um, Kingwood. The county commissioners will get more money, <laughs> you know, or the county will get more money, the library will get more money, and so forth and so on. And the one thing, and I'm almost done, I know Don, you want to go someplace, um, the one thing is, oh, well, well, by the way, there was some pretty oh. little things I went to. Oh, I want to say one other thing about more money. Those are only for inside mills. All the rest of it doesn't generate any more money for, for most levies because they're for a fixed millage. Yeah. I mean, for a fixed amount, not a fixed millage. Yeah, that's, far, that's pretty much as far as the eye can see. And that was a, a small portion, and maybe it's five times bigger. Or, and then this was also the, um, the construction site. It, it's ugly. And at the end, you'll see the guy's house back there. 
Well, that's the guy, the, the, the guy lived next to that, um, that I interviewed. Um, so, just a point, last point. The, um, in the Kingwood, even though it was, I, I figure about 10% of the, 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 of our school children in the Miami Township go to Cedarville schools. That's my calculation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a hundred percent of the school taxes would have gone to Cedarville or, or. under Kingwood, just because of how the. And I know we serve all, but we would have been, been a huge development, and Yellow Spring schools would have received none. So part of part of why I'm not going ahead and do agreeing going along with the moratorium on the western side is, you know, the, the Kingwood people are the really ones who wanted it, and I don't know what Yellow Springs residents, I've heard some of what they want. Um, I don't know if solar is any worse than what's coming from the west. I don't know that conservation even are really protecting um, waterways, or if we couldn't use more money for our schools, the Yellow Spring schools. Marilyn, in your, when, in your investigation, did you find any, are our waterways being polluted right now because of farming? Did you find out? Anything? I don't know any way except for, where did I go with that? I am, um, avert your eyes. Um, I did pass that. In, which was in the middle. It was. It wasn't close. I looked at it. I looked for signs of erosion. It had a pretty big buffer. I think that's a tributary of Little Darby Creek. Oh, I meant here in our area. When in your investigation, you talked about the waterways not being polluted. I mean, or the potential. Um, are, are our waterways currently in our in Miami Township in our area? Are they currently or in in Ohio being polluted because of farming? Um, I think that the whole game is that nitrogen and phosphorus mm -hmm. um, leach, leaching into the and siltations covering amphibian eggs and all kinds of species eggs. Yeah, I, I would lose so a problem. You're saying there are I problems. think all of industrial agriculture is having problems. There's there's siltations into streams that decrease mm -hmm. um, species. There's the, the algae blooms, the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico is a product of mostly phosphorus from farms. And I, I don't have, we're all culpable. We all live off of mm -hmm. um, farmers' work and we all um, put farmers in an untenable position where we can't ask them to put a big buffer around our streams at their own expense and so. And one more question. Um, in Madison County, um, was this project um, one continuous area or was it, was it divided like Kingwoods is gonna be is gonna be segmented? It's not just one, it's there's multiple areas that they tie together. I would say it's similar. The, uh, Kingwood might be a little more fragmented, but okay. there were spaces in between. Okay. Yeah. So they went off them around private properties like Kingwood in. Say that again? Listen, so it's kind of wound all around private properties like Kingwood is. Yeah, it's all private property, I guess people who didn't lease or didn't. Well, I'm just saying it's homeowners. many homeowners. There were, I will say there are fewer, I, I observe fewer homes in the Kingwood area. And I think that's a big, one of the reasons I really want to go along with the moratorium on Kingwood is because there is a high density of people living there compared to most. And I don't know if now's the time to say, I, I, we tried to sell our home a year and a half ago, and it's a very desirable property in a very hot market, and the people looked at it, they loved it, they were not interested in the solar. So yeah. I think in a lot of their, oh, it doesn't affect property values, garbage. Yeah. It's, it's, do they account for the properties that wouldn't sell at all? because of what happened. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, my argument uh, overall has been <laughs> we have zoning, and there are reasons for why we choose zoning, and uh, 
uh, if it's agricultural zoning, why do we uh, agree to anything else? Um, we can review and say, okay, well, let's let's change our zoning. But I I feel bound to our zoning. Um, more broadly, we're in a we're sort of at the edge of exurbia uh, from the Dayton area and Springfield area. Uh, there are other pressures on farmland, uh, and quite apart from uh, the way the farming has been done, we do need food, and to have, uh, there are lots of factors besides having land, there are services for farmers uh, that need a, a critical mass of market. That is, where are you gonna put uh, agricultural equipment repair shop? Uh, well, where there are farms. And as farms get sold off, uh, it's harder and harder to uh, keep, keep the support services going. In the big picture, yes, we want electricity and we want food. We should be looking at statewide or region-wide <clears throat> what's the base that we need for agriculture and where are we going to get our electricity. And until we make those bigger uh, picture choices, uh, my first step is follow our current zoning. Uh, and the, the pressure is to review that. Okay, let's review that. Uh, I can go on and on, but that's... Yeah. Well, that's exactly what we've done. I mean, we put a six-month moratorium in place for to uh, encourage the, not necessarily encourage, because we have uh, author, or we've requested they review mm -hmm. uh, zoning uh, possibilities. You know, it may not come to anything, but we've requested that they review them during this six month period. So we're, you know, we're proactive in that case. And then of course the two year one that Maryland has, has drafted, so. And, and that kind of central planning isn't being done. I mean, it's, I hear you, it's excellent done. It's not being done, the, the model is coming from without. And, yeah. Let me just also point out that the majority of anything that's grown in this township isn't for food. I'm sorry, what? It's not for food. We're not growing food here. Not food that we can sell. Uh, point well taken. <laughs> um, for food for cattle <laughs> or for ethanol. And then, yeah. and then or it's sold exported. 50% of soybeans now, I think it's 20% of corn. Mm -hmm. Then I think we'll just, if we discourage we, them, we'll it, just it, go to Madison County because yeah. Madison County has three more on the dock and then Bill Gates wants to build a $6,000 <laughs> one in battery storage. 6,000 acre, you'll probably Jeez. get it, so. I would like to, to move this resolution. Yeah, thanks and for- then there could be more discussion. There doesn't have to be. Um, Before we move it, may I ask that, Marilyn, you present the resolution and read the resolution and then ask for a motion? <laughs> Absolutely. <Okay. laughs> this is an ongoing study here. We'll be all the time, too, I'm sure. Resolution 2023-29. Whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township value prime agricultural soils of our township, and whereas the Board of Trustees of Miami Township held a community meeting on November 7th to solicit input from the community on whether the Board of Trustees should request that Green County Board of Commission take the necessary steps to declare all or part of the unincorporated portion of Miami Township 
a restricted area for large-scale wind and solar facilities, and whereas 28 people testified in person, 16 indicated support for the to request that Miami Township be made a restricted area for large-scale solar facilities, 12 against, and 18 people gave written testimony, nine in favor, nine against. Whereas a second meeting for community input was held May 1st, 2023, and there was unanimous testimony, four in person and seven written submissions, requesting that Miami Township be made a restricted area for large-scale scale solar facilities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, <laughs> typo, is formally requesting that the Green County Board of Commissioners take the necessary actions to declare all, un all unincorporated land south and east of the Little Miami River of Miami Township, a restricted area for economically significant wind farms and large scale solar facilities for a period of two years pursuant to the authority granted by revised code 303.58. And those extra words in there, I'll, I'll go ahead and scratch them out. <laughs> Make a nice clean copy. That is, the extra words being, you repeated Board of Trustees. And yeah, I did a lot of copying. Uh, I so move. No second. Any further discussion? No. I would only say that you're detailing uh, written testimony and spoken testimony at a couple meetings here is a great understatement of the public input we got. But there were other events uh, that we didn't plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and I I did that because they won't act on anything unless Right. I but I hear you, yeah. But unless we unless we hold up a hearing and so yeah. Okay. Any hearing no other further discussion. May we vote please. We moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-29 as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Ocher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. The resolution is adopted. I, I would like to make a comment that uh, I appreciate the process we've gone through and will be going through. We're not a we. We haven't all agreed, and this is a compromise, and so, so much of our business is just uniform. Uh, everyone votes yes, you know, whether it's uh, the contract on the ambulance or whatever. Uh, so this is, I think, and you've run this well. Gosh, John, thanks. I Can I say it. something? All right. I'd like to thank all three of you for the work you've put in on this, I don't, let's just hope the county commissioners actually pay attention to it. <laughs> they've indicated that they I would. They yes, would. They've, they've, yeah. they've been going. They did it for Cedarville and Zena. Okay, we got more meeting? Of course we do. Sure. Um, <laughs> we, um, the zoning inspector's report. A lot happened since our last meeting three weeks ago. <laughs> um, I actually issued a permit for an in-ground swimming pool and another one for uh, an expansion of the garage. Not, <laughs> not earth shaking, but some business in the, in the office. Um, I also signed a survey record, which is a little different this time. This was someone who um, was basically buying some land from the neighbor to enlarge the piece of property that they own. It isn't creating a new building lot, it was just expanding the one that they already had. Um, so, and I think that may be a, a first. It doesn't create any new, new parcels, but I did uh, approve that. Uh, the Zoning Commission did not meet, uh, as, as usual in May. I hope they're not all replanting in June because the current weather is, does not bode well for the, the much of what was already planted. Um, that was a little Chinese corn curl. <laughs> God. 
it's it's some when when the planter goes down and knifes in the seeds when the ground is a little bit moist it just folds back up over the seeds when it's really dry you can actually see the seeds mm -hmm. sitting there mm -hmm. in the slot and so there's those seeds that were planted when it was after the rains quit and then there are the ones before that that all sprouted and you know they're this big and, and they're still this big so i don't know i haven't had any i've only talked with one farmer he said there's certainly the potential that we'll have to replant this year mm. uh, but that's that has nothing to do with zoning. Yeah. the what i did have happen was uh learn from a neighbor complaining that there was a significant event that took place out on fairfield pike 115 fairfield yellow springs road um, over the memorial day weekend um, was completely unpermitted and illegal. I'm in conversation with the property owner who was not aware that it took place hmm. and has uh, given me the name of someone to have a meeting with to discuss it, uh, which will take place tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see what's, what's going on. But that's the um, new and different activity, so to speak. You, you, you set an address on Fairfield Park. One, one, one fifteen. That's not in town. No, no. This is the the, in the township. This is this is Fairfield, Fairfield Yellow Springs Yellow Street Road. Road. I shouldn't yeah, say yeah, Fairfield yeah, Pike. That's yeah. how I tend to think of it. Um, this is okay. if you're if you're driving uh, towards Fairborn on Yellow Springs Fairfield, you'll pass Lamont and Carroll Drive. Okay. And so there's that jog, and then the road does another kind of sweeping jog, and at the end of that jog, second jog is where this property is on the south side of the road. You Memorial Day? Did you say Memorial Day? Well, this the, Party? the event was, I believe, was on Saturday. I'd have to look. Okay. Um, there was it was part of a, a a bigger production or whatever that took place in multiple areas, but there was this particular one there. Anything else happened in the last couple weeks? Not that pops into my head <laughs> at this at this moment. The, um, the let's see. I had a um, the zoning commission is um, What I want to say, uh, they they have not. They're still working on on Chapter eighteen point five, the temporary use uh, permitting, or, or whether to, how to rewrite that. They have the information about the solar, but that hasn't, as far as I know, that's not on the agenda. I mean, I'm not part of that planning, mm -hmm. but that you know the information was relayed. Um, Let's see, what else? Possibly Board of Zoning Appeals? The Board of Zoning Appeals has not had any communication with me. Uh, now, okay, the um, Eli Hurwitz, who has been appointed by you as an alternate, as I yeah, understand, the yeah. uh, you, yeah. you, the trustees, oh, yeah, um, he is, is the librarian at, at the at, more, at Mills Lawn and High School, and I actually volunteer with him all during the school year. And so he said, guess what? <laughs> Came in a couple of Tuesdays ago, and um, I told him I would, I, well, I gave him some basic background information on, on what the Ohio Revised Code says about being a Board of Zoning Appeals member, and and have made arrangements to give him a copy of our code so we can see what our code says about being a Board of Zoning Appeals member. And um, I will probably see him sometime this week because I'm still doing volunteering in the library. That's where that stands as far as I'm concerned, but um, that's just him talking to me and me taking the initiative to getting the information. I didn't know if anybody else was, was doing that or not. I referred to the website. I think the printed copy is now behind um, the, the latest revisions. Um, but, um, 
the, the, the uh, plan development and maybe one other. Um, Richard, did you get the message from Susie Butler? I just wanted to follow up on that. The message from what? Susie Butler. That's that's the the, the 115 Fairfield Pie. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. No, we're, yeah. that's who I'm have a point with tomorrow. And of course, we had our May 3rd BZA hearing for shows again, and, and we're unanimously approved. And I just had a couple of comments furthering to things I've said over the past around procedures to try and help out to improve these things. Name, Steve Weirig. Um, and, and probably just a couple of questions, because there was a couple of things that were maybe uh, confusing to me um, for Richard, which is, but I'll, I'll start. So, so during the hearing, Richard, um, Barbara Kravick read out loud a portion of the unapproved April Zoning Commission meeting minutes. Right. Are you aware how she received them? From the Zoning Commission. The Zoning Commission sent them to her. No, no. The Zoning Commission put gave me the minutes to send to the BZA members. Okay. They, they don't have okay. the BZA members. And, and I'll give you guys a copy of this so that you have it, right? So I've got all my email communication summarized and then copies of the emails because I always get accused of not telling the whole story or making things up. But the morning of May 3rd, which is the hearing date, sorry, let me, let me start back. Monday, prior to the hearing, I sent Richard an email, it's in here, and it, and it asked two questions. It said, first of all, um, can you please send any public testimony to me personally rather than my attorney, because I didn't use my attorney this time. And specifically, if you have any BZA briefing notes, those need to be included as well, because I have a right to see them. We've gotten them, Richard's been uh, happily provided them all in the past. Second question I asked is, did Amy Aker recuse herself? Um, because there was discussion about that, if you remember, in the prior year. Didn't receive an answer. I sent another email Wednesday morning of the hearing, to which he responded around noon, and he said, the last time I talked to Amy Aker, she was inclined to recuse herself, and no, there's no briefing notes. Did you send me a copy of the Zoning Commission meeting minutes? No, they're not a briefing. They are a briefing. No, they they're not approved minutes, Richard. All right. did, you, did you talk with your counsel and see what they said, said about you providing them to me? No. Or not providing them to me? The Okay, maybe I misunderstood. In the past, the briefings that I have copied you are the briefings that I have written for the BZA. Correct. In anything you provided that BZA, you're legally obligated. I didn't obligated. provide it. You didn't provide it to the BZA. You didn't send them to the BZA. All right, I forwarded it along with the public testimony. You sent me the public testimony right. and didn't you send me the minutes. It's, That's it's, correct. It's just more lying deceitful bullshit. I'm sorry. I, I, I've gone from trying to treat this as, as errors in process and personality to I asked a specific question. He specifically didn't send them to me. Why wouldn't you send them to me? I didn't know it, why I should send them to you. You didn't ask for them. You, you don't think those are briefing notes? You don't think that as an applicant I would deserve to have them? Why don't you check with your counsel? Just, just call the counsel. I'll let you guys do that. See if they should have them. I was not able to get them. I know what was your purpose in sending them? Why did the Zoning Commission want them sent? Why would they release and have the BZA read their unapproved Zoning Commission meetings at my hearing? Why? As far as I know, because when there was a meeting at the beginning of the year, when the BZA and the Zoning Commission and the trustees were all together, at least one BZA member said, we would like some guidance on this subject. And the BZAs and the Board of Zoning Appeals said, well, we can, I guess, now that we've discussed this, give them some guidance. Guidance on what? On the stuff they discussed? On, they, on Those are their notes. thinking about the... And, and you provided them as the administrator of those meetings, Richard. You know I that. am not the administrator of those meetings. It says it right in the, in the, on the township website that that's one of your responsibilities. You're the, you're the administrator for the BZA meetings. Am I? Do you not send me all the public testimony? Do you not take my application? Yes. Do you not schedule the meeting? Do you not... Well, that's an administrator. No, I, I work with the BZA to schedule the meeting. It is their responsibility to schedule the meeting. Not mine. You can read the Ohio Revised. So you're just being a nice guy doing it, and that doesn't set a precedent, so a guy like me wouldn't. It, it doesn't matter, Richard. The bottom line is you purposely sent them 
because they specifically say in there a, a, a particular definition of temporary. It's the Zoning Commission's opinion of temporary. Right. Right. And so you, forward, you forwarded it to them. Right. And, and I had no chance to see any of that. I get surprised in the meeting with Barbara Craven reading aloud for public record unapproved Zoning Commission meeting. To, to think that you wouldn't think that I should have those is ridiculous. It's deceitful and ridiculous. It's the same bias and the same stuff that you've been doing. Now, now let's take the next issue. When did Amy, Re Amy Aker recuse herself? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I will find out the answer to that question, Richard, when, okay. you, when you know. You didn't know when we walked into the meeting that she had recused herself. I, just as I told you, you did not there know. I, I, stop, wait a minute. When you, when we, before we walked in that meeting, did you know she recused herself? Be, be really clear, because I'm really intent on this. She said that she intended to recuse herself. So you had no idea. So when we walked no, in, there was four name badges no out and everything. You had no idea that she had recused herself. You had said to me, herself. do you think Amy is going to come to this meeting? I would have said no. But if you, you hear this. Read the email now that I sent it. Did Amy Aker recuse herself? So he plays with the words. Right. The last time I talked to her, I believe she intended to. Well, you don't recuse yourself until you have the meeting. That's when the recusal takes place, doesn't it? It's dishonest, Richard. It's dishonest. It is really dishonest. And it just goes along with the same stuff that's been going on. You, you so twist what, things in your what intellect. Is, what is your point? My, my point is I'm sick and tired of it. I, I demand that he resigns. I want him out of his position. I have zero trust in him. Chris, you sat here last July and said he undermined all the BZA bylaws, and you had an email to prove it, and you saw it. It's, it's one hour and 54 minutes in or whatever. I'll tell you exactly where it's at. You went on a five-minute tirade about it. He undermined you guys. He undermines the process. We don't have trust. If we want to do a public hearing and let me bring in the other 20 people that feel the same way, I will. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of no action and no discussion around these kinds of things. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous that he sends stuff to the BZA, doesn't copy me. I've received all of the briefing notes in the past. And what was Why the would result be? of the BZA meeting? We got approval. It doesn't matter. You know how much time and money I spent with counsel and other people because I don't trust him? And you guys don't do anything to intervene in the process. I will say that... Um as you presented in the case, the, the whole discussion around temporary use was very much an evolution of multiple months of Steve uh, attending your meetings back and forth and volunteering to work on the festival rules. There was a lot of subtlety around the question of what is temporary. And it was the very last minutes, April 2023 minutes, when I didn't see your name in attendance, and as you said in, in testimony, you were not in attendance at that meeting, and when you were not in attendance, in attendance, they made a strong statement of what temporary was. Imagine that. And when I tried to get the minutes after, I, I was surprised to hear Barbara present them, because I hadn't gotten them, and I've been in contact with um, Charles Sweeney to put them on the, the website. And when, after the meeting, I said, Charles, I didn't get the 20, 23 minutes, he said they're not public record yet, and I couldn't get them. So I, I, I have to agree that the, the specificity of sending that particular minute, and why not send all, why not send the evolution that, of the discussion over the last six months? And so I'll have your words. It, it, so, it felt it felt motive. It felt like there was a motive. Of course it, it felt like there was a motive to 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 sway the zoning. Well, that's the way Barbara used it. That's certainly the way Barbara used it. Which again leads me to my next point. You guys still haven't done any BZA training. Barbara should never read that. Barbara doesn't need to make statements like, "Hey, Dave Chappelle owns a piece of land behind his house. Now why doesn't he have shows there?" What are we talking about? This is my application for approval. The same thing I've done five other times. We need to get training for the BZA. They need to have bylaws. Um, there needs to be a more efficient process. I walk into every one of those going, what procedural stuff is are they going to use against me this time? And, and, and he's at the root of it. Has been for three years now that we've been doing it. I've, I've come in here and I've given you example after example after example. During the meeting, let's, let's clear this up right now too. During the meeting, they go into executive session. Richard tries to go. No, Richard did not try to go. I sat there and watched it all. 
Jeff came up and asked you, why aren't you going in? You said, Jeff, all you got to do is ask me to come in and I'll come in. I walked up to you and said, in July 18th meeting minutes, this man made it really clear that you're not to go into executive session. I I've never heard of such a thing. I've never heard of it. I so checked the Ohio Revised Code. The township trustees do not determine the procedures of the zoning commission. I mean, at the DZA. They don't. I didn't demand to attend their hearing. I said, if you want me, I will attend. Can I clarify? I want you there. And I went in and I talked to everybody that was there and most of them didn't have a problem, but the lawyer did. And she, she had a good reason, I don't remember what it was, about why you shouldn't attend the executive session or whatever we're calling it now. But it, it wasn't because he didn't want to be there. No, it was because the lawyer advised the trustees that she shouldn't be in there, and Chris made a statement to it on July 18th in the meeting where you were sitting in that chair, and then you said you'd go in anyway. And so now as an applicant, I get to jump up and go, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. No. All right. I am, I am, I serve as the, I don't know what the exact title is. I mean, I guess I serve as the zoning inspector in, for the BZA, and if the BZA asks me to do something, and it's within my ability to do it, I do it. I, I, I personally believe the time has passed, where, where we're past this intellectual, I know more than other people about zoning for the last 20 to 25 years, and I'm gonna make decisions on my own, go behind your back and do the things that you stated with the bylaws, be untransparent with me, completely untransparent on that email. You could have clearly said, yes, Amy's planning to recuse, but she won't officially do it till tonight. And still, instead, you say, well, the last time I talked to her, she was inclined to. It's just all wordplay, Richard. But no, there's no briefing notes, but I know damn well I'm going to send these zoning commission meeting minutes, and I don't think you need them, Steve. Check with council on that. See what they have to say. See if that would have been uh, uh, even remotely appropriate. Why would you send me briefing notes? Why would you be obligated to do that, but you don't have to send me unpublished, unofficial zoning commission written meeting minutes that are going to be read by a BZ member in our hearing. If the, if the zoning commission had asked me for the email addresses of the BZA and I gave them to they, them. They didn't. No, no don't I'm be hypothetical. Asking, I'm asking. You them. sent it to them. You sent me all the public testimony and in addition to the BZA members, you sent that plus one little piece of paper. But you didn't say I want to interrupt here. I, I think we're receiving a formal request uh, that our zoning inspector, uh, that we should review his status. I, I don't want to hear your back and forth unless we're in that discussion. Okay. Can I make just a couple other recommendations? As a township, I think you guys really ought to eliminate the use of personal emails. Once again, I heard it time and time again from people who wanted to send testimony for the hearing that they don't want to send it to us personal email. They don't trust it. So I really think we need to do away with it. And, and I highly, highly request, and maybe Marilyn, you're working on this because I know you've been working on meeting minutes, but let's get the zoning commission meetings taped and published. I, I've gone personally twice. I, I, I like the group of guys. I'm not trying to claim anything bad, but I know I've gone two times when they said the meeting's over and then I leave, and then the meeting minutes the next month that they approve reflect that the, the conversation continued on. It's kind of like, we're kind of dumb stuff that applies to you, I leave, and then that conversation comes back up, and then I have no idea what's said. The meeting minutes are very cursory. They're getting better, but, but they don't reflect everything. One last suggestion. No matter who you talk to around zoning issues, the comprehensive land use plan keeps coming up. But, but people like Richard and the ZC themselves only want to quote farming in the rural field. That's what the zoning, that's what the comprehensive land use plan says. It's, it's like a 30 page document that talks about all kinds of great things in there. And one of the things that it talks about about 15 different times is the harmonious nature and the only way this plan will succeed is it being done in harmony with the village. 
of Clifton and Yellow Springs. It talks about it incessantly in that document. If you actually just read these meeting these these meeting minutes, what they say, you know, we don't need to um, consider economic anything. We don't. I've, I've sat in zoning commission meetings where they where they sort of make fun of the village. They made fun of agraria. It's not harmony. And so my recommendation is that either in a public forum or you guys with the zoning commission and maybe the BZA sit down and, and go through that document, refresh everybody's memories, and, and, and discuss. I don't need to be there. Just have a discussion about those what those different things mean. Because we have five people that are spending all their time right now on zoning stuff with the intent that it only protects farming in the rural field. And, and I made the argument to my blue in my face that what we're doing out there doesn't destroy or affect either one of those. And it creates harmony with the town and with the businesses in town. But they won't consider it and they write it right here in the minutes. So, so don't throw the comprehensive land use plan out like it's some guiding document to prevent any of these activities when it actually specifically encourages these activities. And it also has all kinds of things written in there that were, that were supposed to be followed up and done since it was created that I'm sure aren't done. So it's not, a, it's not a Bible document that people can throw around and say, this is why we're going to do this. If we're going to, if we're going to quote the comprehensive land use plan and we're going to actually use it, then let's actually use it. Let's not use it for our specific advantage. My recommendation. Yeah, well, I thank you for the, the pieces you pulled out of that. And I was, I, I myself will, will review it. Again, I didn't. I didn't realize to the depth it went to, to talking about economic harmony, economic um, sustainable, economical and sustainable development. Um, and it, it is true that we, we get the upshot of the of the, the of what they say the plan is about is the rural feel, which is not the entirety of what it's about, and the rural feel is not a measurable, meaningful is descriptor. Um, you mentioned in some of your other mail, um, or no, in your testimony about there are others, there are others in the township who are looking to do, who who want to do events, um, and I talked with Deandra at. Um, Green County Regional Planning and she said it would be completely appropriate for the township to hold a hearing on the, the different parties in the township, the, the rural people, the farmers, the rural dwellers, the people who have creative business interests and I think that would be a good thing for us to do. Um, we've done it with solar, we could probably do more on solar but I had originally proposed it as um, informing the future rewriting of the comprehensive land use plan. I'm taking that off the table just for our benefit. Um, I think we should um, include more people in this conversation. Yeah, let, me just, let me just give you one last example so you guys can kind of get where I'm at. So, so this, this whole preliminary zoning commission meeting that's, that we're right at, at the hearing talks really about the word temporary. How did you get those? Um, Richard sent them to me when I emailed and requested them. So, so the whole point, the whole point of this paragraph, I'll go back and read it, is they're debating. So they spend a meeting debating what the word temporary is to give the BZA guidance. Fantastic. It's been discussed at nauseam, right? And, and their conclusion is, if you let somebody come back and do the same thing every year, that's not temporary. That's what this says. And so their guidance is, that's not temporary, and it doesn't fit what they believe the intent of the comprehensive land use plan is. Nine out of 12 townships in Greene County have a 15-day festival permit in their, in their code. Why don't we have one? Because we have this catch-all temporary use clause. And that's the complaint by the BZA and others, is it's just a catch-all. It says you can do anything that's not permitted for up to 12 months. Most townships have taken that out, replaced it with specific permitted uses. That's exactly what your zoning commission is working on right now. And, and I've been participating with them on the festival permit. But their conclusion in this whole document is, well, if you get to do it every year, it's not, it's not temporary. But nine out of 12 townships in our county have festival permits that you can do every single year for 15 days. So, so the point is, these conclusions that get read at hearings and they get spit out by biased people, are, they're, they're uncalled for. They don't even make sense. Like, how can you make that call? Like, 
it's, it's, it's such a precedent in our township. Xenia Township has one that doesn't even specify how many days you can do it. Everybody else is 15 days, nine out of 12 townships. And they're, and they're rinky-dink little provisions for festivals that have two sentences in them. I gave them, I gave them a page and a half of requirements that make it you know, be handled well, safely. Well, if and when it gets to the point that they've actually well, written. Sorry, and that, Chris, if I could just make my conclusion. My, my point is, we have a zoning commission up working on lots of stuff. And, and I sat again in the July meeting when you guys talked about the PUD stuff and you didn't like where the zoning commission was going and you sat down and said, guys, this, this is where we want this to go. I think Richard's quote was exactly, why would we have them sit around and work on stuff that we're never even gonna vote yes for? They're working on stuff right now. Why isn't there any guidance? I mean, you guys can do a resolution. You, you, you can give them guidance. No, that's not our, that's not our function. So, so you'll wait for them to waste all their time and then you'll get a vote. That's we'll the way wait for them to do the yeah. work that they're empowered to do. That, okay. you know, that, that's just the way the system is. Mm -hmm. And whatever comes out of that board, whether it's a, well, it has to be a recommend, recommendation to come out of the board or else it would die uh, internally. That recommendation would go to Green County Regional Planning yeah, for I, Review. I, I, understand. I, get, I get the process. It would be reviewed by experts in planning, certified experts, in addition to all members of the county uh, regional planning board. There's a member from every single jurisdiction uh, that reviews it, questions it, suggests, thinks it's a good idea, thinks it's a bad idea, whatever it is. That recommendation is put down, sent back to the zoning commission, and then they consider that, I, I know you know all these things, yeah, but I I'm saying it for the general public. Yeah. They consider the, that recommendation, whether it's to uh, approve or to den deny what they're proposing. They then decide whether they want to continue to uh, recommend it, to approve what their internal work has been, or to take the recommendation of the commission and uh, change it or, or, or can it or whatever. And then it comes to this board and we can approve it or deny it or modify it at our discretion, and, and, and that is our sole responsibility. Well, for, for the general public's education too, there's two other ways to do zoning. These three trustees can pass a resolution and hand it to the zoning commission. That is an option, you can. So, so, so you don't, don't act like you're absolved and you can't do anything with zoning. Right? You guys could say, you guys could say right now, we're interested in a festival provision, we want it to be 15 days. They're going that's to appease. Not, that's not our function. We are not. I know you. Zoning. I know you believe that. What yeah. is the Why did you do it with PUD? Why did you do it with PUD? We sent it back. You, you got a proposal, yeah. so they spent all their time working on it. It went through regional planning. It went through this whole process. Regional you, planning recommended against their work, and so you got it. And then you said, "I want changes before I'm going to have a yes. public hearing." Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. But, but, but you can submit a resolution. Yes, you, you can adopt what, what is the purpose of that? I, I, I've seen it on diagrams that we could submit a resolution to change the code. What, what is the purpose of that? Because we, we feel, well, why is it that we feel really strongly about it and, and give it to the Zoning Commission, but in general we're told that's not our job? What, what was it? Maybe that's a question I need to ask. It's an opinion. It's Chris's opinion, honestly. I mean, I, I've talked to lots to my council, and he's got lots of examples of, of township so trustees opinion, then what, what do submitting they do? resolutions for zoning ordinance changes. So and, it, and you can involve yourself in zoning if you like. I and, get that you don't want to. And then they, they have to carry it out, or they, they have to at least consider it? Yes. They have to consider it. Yes. They don't have to do our will on that. Correct. No, it goes back through the same process. It's just the exactly origin the of it. We've asked them to, to, to consider yeah. the zoning. Except for do the, what if they don't pass, they might not pass it on to Green County, for example. If, what, that's right. They may not, and that's their responsibility. That's why they exist yeah. as an so, independent it's, commission. It's, it's like this. The initiation point for a change to the zoning it can be the zoning commission starting that process. It can be you guys starting that process, or it can be any resident. Yeah. It's certainly easy enough to to draw to, to submit one line, but is that line a, that line of request is it appropriate? When we requested to to have them review a, a, a draft zoning regulation, I think we all three felt that was appropriate. Number one, because it is not on the books. It's not like reviewing it or changing it or anything else. It's just 
taking a look at it and see if it's something that they feel that is appropriate for Miami Township. If they decide it's not, it doesn't get past their board, and it it dies. Okay. The same way as if we ask for, uh, you know, please consider a, a, a permanent, temporary, temporarily permanent, a temporary exemption uh, for festivals or, or whatever it is. If it doesn't, it, we can request it, but if it doesn't get past them, it never comes back to us for, for adoption. If it doesn't it has the to, zoning commission? Right. It has to follow the system. And I just don't believe the system is for us to, to hand feed them um, uh, zoning regulations to pass. Except for PUD That's and solar. What he said. Except for PUD and solar, but yeah, I understand. I'm not, you know, I'm, not su I'm not suggesting you hand feed. I'm suggesting you say to them, here's what's going to happen, Chris. Let me, let me predict. And I'll, you know, if, I, if I had money on me, I'd just put it out there for you. And I, I think it'd be a safe bet. You're going to get a proposal for a festival permit, and it's going to be for two or three days a year. That's what they're going to get. And, and they're going to go on through that whole process. They, I mean, I sat in four meetings with them where that's the only that they worked on. So based on what they wrote in these meeting minutes, I'll, I'll bet heavily that they're going to appease the public by putting one in, and they're going to say you can do it two days a year. And therefore, any economic benefit from it is gone, diminished. And they say right here they don't need to consider economic development. So, so I, I get it. I, I'm a patient person. Uh, I, I don't understand it. It's an efficiency thing for me of why they would spend five, six months of meetings talking about this stuff. Come to you guys, and then you guys go, no, I don't want three days. I want 15 days because it's good for the town and the township. Now, I'm projecting that that might be what you say or it may not be what you say. That's the system. Yeah, that's how okay. it works. So and I want to be very clear that we did not request them change the PUD um, zoning language prior to them making the recommendation that we change the, the zoning regulation. I hear you. We only did it. But you can't. I'm not saying you can't. You didn't, but you can't. Well, yeah, we could do anything. Yeah. But you're making it sound like, you know, we just throw it out anytime we feel like we want to do something. The solar and the PUD. No. No, you gave them guidance. Two that's entirely that. different things. You just gave them guidance. I get that, but that's all, that's all I'm trying to say. You gave them guidance. Okay. Did we give them guidance before it went to Green County? We asked no, afterwards. Afterwards? afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll patiently wait. We'll keep working with them. The townships <laughs> are a, uh, a, a study in, in, in patience. Is a team. Uh, and it's by design. Do not get me wrong. It is by design that nothing moves that quickly. Because there's there's no way, there's no communication to get out there. This idea of having some grandiose um, meeting with, with all members of the township in order for opinions on this and opinions on that. We do that all the time and we get you and you. I'm not sure what this gentleman's here for, but. Making <laughs> sure that, that is probably, that is probably one, two, one or two thirds more people that you get for these meetings. We're it just doesn't exist. Yeah, we're going to keep working on it for you. We've had, what were the, what were the, the joint village and township meetings? What was that called? Remember about 10 years they ago? Were called, oh. Dream, oh, no. Um, every fifth Monday. And then, but then we had meetings, public meetings in Clifton. We had them two or three in here, you know, vision, that's what it was, envisioning, you know. And we all and we brought everybody together. And the comprehensive land use plan meetings that we had were just, you know, there were a couple of Richard, you went to them, and there might have been I don't think there may have been one member of the public there, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Anyway, speaking of visions, would my other two trustees be amenable to having, a, if I did the work, a town hall on um, other entities inviting? Uh, Country people, I, uh, farmers, landowners. Speaking for me, small I'm business. I'm 100 with you. Piper's Orchard, yep. Clementine, yep. Do it. Glen. Yep. Okay. Anything you want to do, it's fine with me. Party. How about you? Uh, yes. Medical okay, call cool. from Not the emergency. You need a that's I'll pick a date where people are likely to come. Okay, one. Medical based with care. You made some specific points. Yeah. 
Oops. We will act. Up his hand is you guys. I don't know. Did you know you got another email? You Thank you. Are we in the new business yet? <laughs> um. No, 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 no. Anything, anything more, Richard? Um, we're not doing the staying committee. Is now new business, future of Channel 5 camera and shared video. You had something that, that's your item? Uh, I just wonder if we know what we're doing. Yeah. Oh, I thought maybe you With, with the equipment. Okay, no, so Lacey's, Lacey's gone. No, Lacey's gone. Yes, as of June 1st. She's on maternity leave. I mean, okay, and that's so, why she resigned. And we don't know if anybody has taken her place. No. And we want to add the possibility of using it also for the zoning commission that's been requested that we um, also, um, while, while we're at it, ask if it can be used for that. Um, what is the. Um, but we can talk uh, about, about procedure. I don't get the pass. On the, north the, side of the, building here the handoff mm -hmm. situation we talked about a little bit last week, but maybe that could be more efficient okay. so we could see them soon. Well, too. Yeah, I would be willing to deliver to the uh, police dispatcher, uh, and then whoever's working for Channel 5 could get it there. And then okay. we wouldn't have, as I said at the last meeting, uh, she came twice to the door and Lacey. no one answered. I will um, talk to um, the committee cable access channel five people about the future of our recording yeah. meetings. Go on, you want to old business. Anybody have any old business? No. Just by okay. I would entertain a mo motion to adjourn this meeting. So I second. We all vote yes. <laughs> Still going to yeah. oh. Enjoy hard at all.